So, <laughs> welcome to episode 31 of No Shame uh, at SPG Dublin 24. A guest that we've been trying to get on for a good while, but this man is a secret agent, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and he doesn't get the chance. The Russian Hammer, we have him on. What's it's the great fucking to be crack? On. I've been hearing so much about this No Shame podcast that you have set up, you know, and I thought, why? Well, I have to be on this as well. So. Of course, you, you're the helper. There's no doubt. Uh, exactly. Russian, if, if there's something going down, you'll obviously see uh, Artem's in the background pushing your car with you. That's, <laughs> the, that's the type of guy that he is. So um, like, like, like most people here coming in, a lot of people are fierce, a lot of people are strange uh, view of the world and stuff like that, where your view is pretty simple. Yeah. Your view is, if you have a bag of money and a man that needs four, ring me. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> it's always been like that, since as far as I can remember. Yeah. Yeah? That's it, but that that's you know that's the way it has to be. Do you know what I mean? It's got you, you where it's got you. Fr- it's got you exactly. far. Exactly. It's got you where you need, like you deserve to be. Exactly, and that's I always kind of see it as no matter what happens in life, you know, you kind of have to stick to those values, you know, loyalty, you know, stay with the people that you know been always with you, you know, and that's that's kind of one of the rules that I always keep. Yeah. No matter what else is going on outside of that, that has to stay. In, yeah. In that Me way. too. Loyal to like, loyal to people uh, is a huge thing. You know what I mean? Not loyal yeah. to things or anything else. Loyal to people is a huge thing. So it'll go all the way back, right? Because I know that I know you have an amazing story. I've heard it and I've laughed my balls off a few times at it. But there's, I said, there's some people that don't understand where, where where all of this foot movement comes from, and if they maybe are at one of our Christmas parties one of the years, they might yeah. they might know. So. You look to the yeah. All of a sudden, four or five drinks later, Artem is an absolute animal on the dance floor. <laughs> <laughs> Where did that come from? Go see oh, you yeah. doing backflips, like know, yeah. 360 spinning on his back. He's like teenage you minus all he is. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess dancing. from back in the day, you know, I always uh, I'd say everybody knows at this stage that I did ballroom dancing. You know, that was one of the things that I kind of did Savage. as a kid. You know, I always wanted to fight, but. My mom never kind of wanted me fighting. She said, no, no, that's too dangerous. You'll have your nose broken or, you know. You don't think you've ever got your nose broken. Have exactly, you know? yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, that's actually the only part. <laughs> the only part never, never been broken. Never been broken, yeah. But, um, yeah, and, and then I was also, like, messing with other stuff, like a bit of, like, try a little bit of break dancing with the my friends back in the day. Um, and that's it, you kind of just remember it and then every now and then, I wouldn't really do it normally, but you know yourself, oh, I hear. if the night is going well, <laughs> a few drinks and you down your is neck, flowing. before you know it, I remember one Christmas, store. I was nearly sure that you were going to break your neck, man, because yeah, you were like back flipping hands, yeah, I, I, just... I take the break part and break dancing seriously, because <laughs> <laughs> like, I remember, um, I don't know where we were that time, but I think we were at some rowing club or something like that uh, for the Christmas party. Oh yeah, but actually, I remember that, yeah. remember I was lit, I just remember being in the car park, and uh, yeah. Camille Rezevsky was handing me vodka, drink this, it's great. Yeah. You know what I mean? We ended up in CE West, I don't remember it, I yeah, came home on Tuesday or something like that. Oh my god, yeah. Hell, yeah, what a day. Well, that's what Christmas I, party, yeah. I didn't believe that you, were, you could do breakdancing, or you, or you could dance until that night. Like, I, I thought the people, like, like boy, the boys were like, yeah. you know what I mean? I've, I've had a few performances no famous performances one more was I think at Chris's wedding as well oh yeah, yeah I was gone yeah. then because I, I bailed them. but that was another bad list session as well and the way it? you can tell that they've been doing it is you know let's say you're wearing a white shirt and the next day it's all black <laughs> and spinning on it and god knows what and, and it's like so that's the first time so sometimes you know when you wake up you're like was I dancing last exactly night? that's the first time look at the shirt you've got to look yes, at the shirt I was. so Adam when you came in when you came to SBG as well, when you when you we all started off together in, in that little that little group of people just trying to make it, you know what I mean? You had her. Yeah. That was for sure. I was looking at a picture the other day and I think it was there's, there's one in the cage and you and Carl having her is just the funniest thing that you can ever at yeah. the same time. And especially and he, Pierre Queeley. He, he had proper hair as in Carl. He, he had like corny like a perm, yeah. you know what yeah. I mean? And Peter Queeley <laughs> and Dean Donnie. <laughs> so Jesus It's mad as like 10 years ago boy Like in 10 years You're not gonna have hair someone, If someone said that to me now Like I'll be, I'll be, Boy I'll you. Makes you look much more Russian Yeah I was hold, I was holding on To it for a long long time And then I was just like Right that's it I've had enough Just shave it all off And that's it <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking about that myself Because I've got car parks And all going on here now But, it's, but it's, it's funny Because like when When you can just starting to lose it. You're still trying to like, to, <laughs> you can go swimming somewhere. Let's say you jump in the pool, and as soon as you come up, you just 
you fix it. You know? <laughs> yeah. You're always aware of it. Like, if it starts raining, oh, gosh, you're gone. I'm aware of the hair. And then once you kind of shave it off, that that's it. Then you just sort of just, life is simple again. Life is simple again. <laughs> Thinking of that, uh, I think your man Arden or Jordy Shaw got a bleeding uh, off my arm, or Bellator now as well got a, got a haircut today. And I'm like, I've never seen somebody getting so much attention for the haircut. Oh, really? You know what I mean? I was like, fair play to him. Yeah. Man cut his hair and people are like, what the fuck? In the newspapers and stuff like that going like uh, uh, on uh, the uni lad and stuff like that I think I've seen on crazy so say say guy is coming up now because this is what I this is like what I like to use this for a lot so if guy is coming up now and mistakes that we've made mistakes that uh, uh, things that we haven't made things to dodge and stuff like that so coming up you would have fought any motherfucker going there's no like I remember there was times you were going out every like the three weekends in a row sometimes twice in a weekend <laughs> yeah uh, yeah, I guess well, when I kind of got into it, I didn't really think of it as a sport or career. I mean, I just thought, okay, this is fighting, you know, I'd like to time, try and, yeah. and fight, you know, and I thought if you're going to fight, you know, you always hear this, people say, oh, I want to fight the best. So I thought this is, you know, the thing that we should be doing. And I said that I also, so I actually took it serious. <laughs> and I actually did try and fight the best guys available to me at the time. Um... I don't know, kind of looking back, I'm not sure whether it was a good thing or a bad thing, you know, probably, you probably need like a middle ground, you can't maybe do it too much, you can't pad your record too much, but you also do need to gain some experience as well, you shouldn't really be jumping into it straight away, I mean, nowadays, probably easier because the amateur scene is so good, yeah. you can literally stay there for quite some time Very and good. develop good skill set, whereas back in those days, there was no strikes on the ground, no head strikes on the ground, I believe, yeah. and some other rules. That's different. Because yeah, so... And there wasn't really it. anyone. There wasn't really many people to fight, you know, at amateur especially. No. So you just kind of go pro and that pro was it. Go straight away. So I, and I think a lot of, like, say a lot of the divisions and a lot of the, the systems and stuff like that now are full of the, the weight divisions. The, all the weight divisions are kind of full now. But now, as you said, the guys coming from amateur now are, are like, are going to be so much better than a lot of the pros that yeah. came through at the time. So a lot of the divisions, when guys pulling over from this amateur thing, the pro uh, divisions are going to start filling with a lot more quality. No, I'm saying it's not quality there, but when you look at the world now, there's like, you could name 10 fighters that would be the pinnacle of what you would, like, say, teach people to fight like, or, or what you'd want to, you'd want to fight like yourself. But when, when, when the little few years pass by now, all the amateurs having such a solid career and yeah. such a solid platform, there's going to be like, there's going to be hundreds of fighters that are, have skill sets and stuff like that, that people, like, you're gonna have guys that are like long fighters, short fighters, overhand weight fighters, like leg lock fighters. Like when we were coming up, there was one or two around. Yeah, and even then, like when there were leg lock fighters, there was just a guy that kind of you know went for leg lock, not really much technique behind it, but just kind of went for it. And already people were, oh my god, what's going on? Like whereas now, if you get a leg lock fighter now, it's so technical. Yeah. You definitely don't want to get you know. You know, Bad spot don't against, want to get up into them angles of that. Like hundred percent, because like now, as I said, guys, there's so much footage and so much material on it, on foot locks and leg locks and all now that like, when a guy is a leg lock fighter and has good hands and good wrestling, now it becomes like, like become dangerous. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think in a few years it's gonna be it's gonna be such a crazy pool of fighters there. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's gonna be yeah interesting to see because even now you already see people like you already see the landscape change a little bit because people don't like to wrestle as much anymore. Yeah. Because they know it's so energy consuming and the takedown defense is getting better and better. And then you can't take a guy down and then you still have to fight and you're tired. You know, that's people are afraid to go for them. Tyron Woodley is a good example, actually. He doesn't barely go for any takedowns anymore in his fights. Like, he has gotten so, like, I guess, afraid of getting yeah, tired or something, just staying there and waiting, waiting, waiting. Like, back in the day, you know, the wrestlers that, you know, the Matthews and all that went for it. Because. Chances were they were going to get the takedown. It was all about commitment. Once you kind of committed for a shot, you were going to get it most likely because the wrestling takedown defense of others weren't up to the scratch yet. Yeah, it is. And, and, and people go on about like, uh, like cardio and stuff like that. And be like, oh, he has no cardio. And it's like, they don't understand the idea of that. A human can only go so fast uh, a certain pace for so long and anyway exactly. it's about chopping that into little pie pieces that you can use in five minute rounds but sometimes like, like you were saying there in the first minute you get stuck in a wrestle against the fence and you're trying to get the guy out and then you step back and it's like there's like that big way exactly that's part of it you know but you, you, uh, getting the head together of when to use them little slices of so pie like, to go like for like if you, if you look at a 100 meter sprinter 
they know that he starts to slow down towards the end of 100 meters so you're not even we're not even able to keep our maximum speed for 10 seconds yeah so imagine in a fight where you have to do like hundreds of them explosions them 10 seconds 15 second bursts you know you you have to be very very precise with when you choose to go and when you you know explode otherwise you'll you'll find yourself in the bots in the bad spot so right could easily have one nostril yeah, there's nothing, no, exactly <laughs> there's nothing worse than getting tired and i don't, ah. I don't give a fuck how good you are 100%. how many black belts you have you get tired <laughs> it came over if you were told you were back to being like a baby uh, exactly again, you know i mean? always see this like having a ferrari let's say but it has no petrol you know you can overtake it in a fiat punto or whatever <laughs> you know, so yeah handbrake is around exactly. the fiat punto because um something was on my mind there was the same Oh yeah, the idea I'd be saying to guys is that when you say we watch amateur fights now, guys come out and they're going for it straight away. So that's the kind of point I was trying to make. That they're trying to take the guy down straight away. They're trying, they're trying to knock him out straight away. To, and then if it doesn't happen in the first minute and a half, you can kind of see them taking a step back and getting that little flight. Like rather than the idea of what you're saying there, the race, you've got a three minute for an amateur fight. You probably need to be moving around at the start and, and finding that distance and, and landing them shots at the start. And then when it comes to the last minute, you're starting to look for the dip as you're saying in the in the sprinting, and get them takedowns from that. Exactly. It's a uh, but I, I think as I said, the, the game's going to be a lot more set up like that where guys are are, are wired to that, and where as I said, you got a wrestler coming out, and a striker coming out. He's trying not to get taken down back in the day. He's trying to take him down, and if he gets taken down, it's probably over. Yeah. yeah. So if we, uh, I know you've got you've loads of barn burner fights that you can go to, right? But. Uh, two of them that pop out of my head and I don't and, and if you get a chance I don't even know if you can find footage you might find a VHS somewhere yeah. <laughs> the first one would be uh, Dave Hill you took a fight against Dave Hill and Dave Hill was number three I think at the time was he or number two yeah he was one of the top guys he was like the probably number one or two in the UK and he, I'd say he was about number six or seven and in Europe and so because he, he, yeah, he yeah. was the one with the wrestling he had Jiu Jitsu he had um, he decent striking he could take a shot yeah, at the time, certainly, you know, he was he was the big name on, on, on the UK and European scene. He had just uh, dropped a decision loss to Tom Ninimaki, who at the time was the number one guy in yeah. Europe. So, um, yeah, well, he was, it was a tough fight. And for me, it was my second pro fight. That Not even, to be honest. Because my first pro fight wasn't really proper pro fight. It was the B class, they called it, where I only had uh, two rounds, two five-minute rounds, no heel hooks, no elbows. You know, it was like a weird kind of... Weird kind of reducer. But yeah. in the idea of that as well, it's, it's hard to even tell what was pro and what was not was pro. The exactly. idea of not having those shin pads and having smaller gloves on is was, was kind of pro back in the day. Yeah. And then someone would say, well, we might like an elbow. We like, fuck it, we'll stop elbows. But like, yeah. I don't think that takes away the idea of still being a pro because it's like, you're still punching someone when it's, it's, the, it's the size of the glove and the no yeah. shin pads thing that kind of changes it for me. And the, um, the round time. Like three minutes and five minutes is different. Yeah, that's one thing I I, I don't understand as well. And um, you know, like on Sherda, for example, your your Ultimate Fighter fights they don't count as part of your no, they, and they don't count on a, on a which I I never really understood. I mean, it's it's a fight. It's exactly the maybe same. Maybe because they're not sanctioned. I don't think. But are they sanctioned with the Athletic uh, State Commission? No, because they're exhibition bouts. They're but exhibition still, bouts. you know, Sherda. I mean, they should know. They should. You know, they should know. It's they, a fight. You they, know, they, they, they turn up the the old nudge. In fact, for most people, you know, they they don't even have their team there. Or anything. It's even harder than, and they, you have to fight. You know, a few times in a row. You know, in a few weeks. Um, in a few weeks' time, you have to fight a few times, so it's even harder, if anything. Because you went through that experience, I'm mad. I got a touch on that now, which saying, because that's a mad experience as long. Then, uh, Arthur Sawinski. Oh, yeah, that was a good fight, that was, actually. Yeah, that was it. That was on Kelly the Gladiator. So that was a savage fight, man. Savage. Yeah, that I was remember after trying to get your paycheck, which was not that same. Yeah. Thing. But like, that was it. That was a good fight. Yeah, and actually, the funny thing about that, because the cut that I got on top of my head, it happened to be on my artery and I didn't really know because the, the medical, this was back in like, you know, those days when the medical personnel the wasn't John's up to the level. Man. Exactly, yeah. It, you it feel was, all right? Yeah, sounds exactly. good There was go. no safe MMA or anything. It right. was just whatever, you know, whoever had a medical kit, right? You're, you're a doctor <laughs> now, you know, things yeah. always have changed now, but those were the crazy times back in the day. And they didn't tell me how serious this was. They said, oh, sure, yeah, you just keep 
keep a bit of pressure on it and oh, they'd be fine and, and I remember I went up for a pint you know thinking right after the fight with an artery cut in his head and, and, and then I dead. started getting dizzy I remember just like, <laughs> I was, no, this is not right I need to go to the hospital and when I got to the hospital you know this was Saturday night normally you'd be stuck in the queue for, for a long time but as soon as the doctor saw what I had he was like no straight in and I remember he when because it was on the artery he had to like put so much pressure he was like tying it I could feel my face lift towards it so not only did I get a few stitches, I also got did a facelift. Squashed, yeah. Yeah, your facelift at the same time. <laughs> We're the member that upstairs, from, from my point of view, viewing it, and that was like, um, we were trying to get you paid. That was it. I mean, yeah. waiting for the guy to count the bleeding money. I know what I mean? And I was like, listen, mate, you got to get the money counted. Pay him now. Like, no, we got to pay the money. Like, pay the, the Yeah, the doctor then said to me, said another hour, and it would have been very, Put very touching. Like, yeah, because said. what was happening was you were putting the, you were putting the tissue on the way, and then it was bleeding through, and yeah. then you were putting more tissue on the way. And yeah. you just had this big pile of tissue off your head about this pile, yeah. this pile and there was blood on the tip of it, like, so it was about, it was a good yeah. foot off your head, that tissue, you know what I mean? And it was... was Soaked right through, man. Yeah, but, and you probably got about 500 euro for that fight, I'd say, as well. You know what I mean? Isn't it mad back in the yeah. day when you think of it? But there, there's where the miles are put in, I feel. Like, even looking back at a lot, a lot of the guys, the miles are put in back in the day. And to me, that's where, you know, when, when people say, well, I'll fight anyone in the world. Well, this is the time to prove that. Well, yeah, because, yeah. listen, if, if you're getting paid, let's say, 50,000, even 50,000 euros, Anyone will fight anyone. Like you literally go on the street now and ask someone, will you fight this guy for fifty thousand? And they'll say yes. But now yes. tell them will you fight <laughs> this guy for free? It's a whole different answer. Yeah. And that's what you found, you know, back in the day. This was the time to prove yourself, you know, and that's the way I saw it. The proof when you to go yourself. and fight. Are you do you, are you fighting because you want to fight, or are you fighting for for something else? You know. I think, I don't think nobody. Um, I think it, nobody else well a lot of people do care what other people think or what they know about it to me it was always about proving whether it was in myself you know what I mean like when, when it gets tough they're like fuck off, yeah, I can dig deep and at the amateur time it didn't matter what you were getting paid but it was like when I get to the big time I want to know that I can I can dig deep but I have the confidence to look across at like say a UFC guy or thing and because a UFC guy at the time was yeah. shit like these guys can levitate but <laughs> they put their hands on them you know what I mean so to form this revolution you, you had a, a, a crazy... You didn't, you didn't start off in, uh, in Ireland. Well, how did this go on? <laughs> I, know, I know the story of it, bro. I think yeah. it's amazing. Because the culture shock and it must have been fucking crazy for you. How did this start off? So you started off... You're obviously... You're a Russian. You were born in Russia. Yeah, exactly. I was born in Russia, yeah. And uh, when I was, I think, 14, we moved to Argentina first. He wasn't Russia. born when he was 14. Yeah. We moved to Argentina. <laughs> I, I moved to Argentina when I was 14. <laughs> Maybe he was born at 14. The Russian you popped out 14 years of age. I'm ready. <laughs> No one has ever seen my birth certificate. So <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> no, but yeah, with, yeah, I moved to Argentina when I was fourteen. Argentina, so from Russia to Argentina, yeah. that's a big culture we moved, shock. I mean, this was back in the in like nineties in Russia. There were crazy times, you know. There was the Soviet, Soviet Union had collapsed in like the beginning of the nineties, and then the, the country was in chaos. You know, there was no rules. There was no just no religion, people didn't know what to do. There was Lino nothing. Was yeah. There was, we only yeah, found this out the other day. Exactly, religion they, was banned for a hundred years. In, uh, exactly, in Soviet Union, they suppressed religion, you know, that was illegal. So then, but to be honest, when when Soviet Union collapsed, there was just nothing. There was just chaos, literally. Chaos, like, yeah. The country just went into chaos because you had a country and then in one day, literally, there was no country. There was many... There was like many different countries yeah, instead of one this, big you're this, you're that, and exactly and, no, and also it, because it was a, like soviet state you know it was um, a communist state so the government owned everything well now it wasn't a communist state anymore and who owned what yeah. nobody really knew this so there was mine. a war for everything yeah there was a war for every little bit of That's anything that imagine you, you had add a religion into that uh, I don't know what oh, would have man. happened to be honest. Yeah, and then on top of that, obviously there was also a, a civil war in Russia, you know, going on with, with the south of Russia, you know, like Chechnya in that region. So all this was going on at that time, and and uh, just life was it's crazy in Russia. Man. And that's when my parents said, "Look, we have to like go elsewhere and, and see." Was, you know. your was your sister born then? No, no, my no, sister no, was sister my, my sister was born here. In, so she's she's yeah. fully. She's, she's fully Irish. Yeah, she's never even been to Russia. Ah, <laughs> yeah, she's never even been to Russia. So, uh, yeah, so we moved to Argentina, and then, but after a while, it, it wasn't any easier there either. Yeah, you know, so plus you don't know. It was tough life as well. Now you also don't know the language. You don't have any of your friends. You don't really, you know, have like even like the smallest of things become hard. Like going to the doctor, let's say, or 
going to the shop, you know, you don't understand anything. Anything. So. Like that, as I was saying, culture shock ways of from going from Russia. And especially because it's so cold. Like, and then Argentina would have been warm. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, right, there was just... up in a fool. But, but the language barrier, that's probably the hardest bit, you know, because you get someone and you can't, <coughs> you know, you can't even... And they probably gave you no way, like, they wouldn't have get be used to people that couldn't think. Oh, yeah, they don't have no time for it. Yeah, there over there it was even like let's say even English. Not many people even would speak really that's English, like saying, Spanish. Yeah. If you speak Spanish, that's it. and to be honest, that turned out to be a really good thing because that that was the reason why I was able to learn Spanish because you just you, you had opportunity you had to, to practice yeah. you know all the time. Because for example, just to kind of move away from the story a little bit, I lived in Germany later on in my life as part of my Erasmus, you know, the exchange program when you're in yeah. university. So I spent like almost one year in Germany. But everyone spoke English so well there, and they were happy to practice. I learned no German in my one year in Germany. <laughs> you learned more English. You, yeah, you couldn't, the Germans, you couldn't you couldn't even speak any German because you know people were just so good. You know, at, they're such good English speakers, and are happy to. And they were to speak practice English, there, yeah, yeah. So that's a that's a different. You know, you try to say a few things, uh, uh, and then all right, let's just speak English, and and that's it. Really? Stop that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and, and then so Argentina then. Yo, yo, what age were you when you moved there? So then when I, when I moved to Argentina, I was 14. And when we left Argentina, I was almost 16. So I came to Ireland when I was like 15, almost 16. And it wasn't even straight to Dublin? No, yeah. So I lived like in uh, Letterkenny first. Jesus, he moved from Argentina to Donegal. Yeah. <laughs> that had to be absolutely crazy. You can imagine the boys you have coming in on the boat. Who was this fella? You were probably the first Russian in, uh, Russian in Donegal at that time. Yeah, there was actually a few others there, to my surprise. You know, the same, there, really? Because there was, a, there was a, a university there. Well, not university, actually, IT, you know, uh, uh, Lerkeni IT. And for some reason, they had some connection with, like, a different Russian university in uh, Vladikavkaz. So there was many people from Bells Vladikavkaz from there, you know, uh, living there and studying in the university. So I'd say they were probably hiding a few boys out there for us. That's probably why. <laughs> you know what I mean? We let you into a university if you hide yeah. a few lads. Yeah. <laughs> Get them off the yeah. island. Yeah, <laughs> but like, so there was, a, yeah, there was a few. But it was, yeah, it was good. I, I enjoyed it, to be honest. I and then when I mean, you came to Ireland, then it was kind of like, so that's where the idea of like you being born in Russia and forged in Ireland kind of comes from. Exactly, yeah. And to be honest, I've, I've never really fought until I came to Ireland. You know, this was where I learned to fight. And yeah. this was my first kind of experience with the MMA. So... I felt right. I was born in Russia, but I, I was born as a fighter in Ireland, so you yeah, know, I have to represent both. So you kind nations. of like you, you have that Russian spirit and you have that fight in Irish skill, like that's it. And you can see it, you can see it. Like when you watch one of your fights, it's showing straight through with us. It's like, fucking, let's go over it. Put it on that gum shield and we're going for it. So then, like, you, obviously, when it all started happening, that was mental, wasn't it? Like the, when, when Connor got signed at that time, I remember being like, Holy shit, it's opening up. Like, uh, yeah. I, I knew it was probably going to happen when uh, Tom Egan had got something. That was, oh, there's, actually, there's links now. Now we can, we really can do yeah. it. And it would have been a group of like, so obviously you've been Connor's warm up partner, trainer. You've probably done more rounds with Connor than any other man in the world. Yeah, we've done a lot of rounds, that, that's for sure. And uh, yeah, probably even just in dressing rooms. Yeah. You know what I mean? You'd, you'd go out, Connor would fight for about four seconds. And you come back in and act them would be like, and then yeah. five fives or something in the dressing room. Yeah, we did, remember, sure, we did different kind of type of warm-up. It changed over the years, yeah. and, but at the start, like, it was, like, loads of rounds in the back. Just loads of rounds. You usually have, like, two or three fights in the back before yeah. you go out and that have a fight. That, that was, and they used to be mental, uh, like, you'd sell tickets to the dressing room in the, uh, the Helix. Yeah. <laughs> back in the day, on New Year's Eve. And yeah. just load a lot of people in to watch the fights in there, because there was someone I was used to go on in them dressing rooms. Yeah, oh like, yeah. Like blood, blood will be coming. You know Helix what I mean? and uh, where was the cage contender show? Oh, that was the basketball. Right? That was a load of savage time because we used that. We used that. That that, that that was the hair rushing. That's what we had there. Yeah, they, they were they were the proper. You know, there were such good shows, and that's Sav- one thing. We were only saying. Other, yeah. We were only saying that because uh, we recorded a podcast yesterday with Chris Fields, and uh, so I was saying yeah, John uh, Ferguson could feel. Man, the man, man the arena. bring him back. <laughs> that's what I say. And that's Just make sure he pays like, people up front. <laughs> no, people always talk about different shows, but the truth is, MMA shows, most of them don't really make any money. You know, no, like UFC is the one place that does, but the rest of them, they're trying to, you know, yeah. 
It's a lot uh, of loss before. Yeah, but exactly. Profit. It's a lot of loss before profit. But that guy, you know, John Ferguson, he could make a profit. Oh, the man. He yeah. was tired, I'd say. He's, <laughs> he's, he's saying now, he lost somewhere the other yeah. day. But here, listen, he put, he put it in. He deserved it. Now, someone's going to think he's paying me money because I mentioned about a few, a few times yeah. on this. So, yeah. so, so then it then it was, it's just fast forward then, isn't it? So it's just fast forward to... We, they hit yeah. the UFC the ultimate fighter came in you were like right that's it that's my ship I'm in there you know exactly. what I mean you had a solid fight getting into that that was a tough fight yeah that was a tough fight I mean, yeah. I, like, I know people are like, a little bit like oh yeah you deserve to be in there I think the Bowie is deserved to be in there because he's probably the toughest guy on that season yeah that was a tough fight definitely you know Maddie, Maddie can fight he has Maddie. won a few you know K1 I think it was stupid and putting the two years together right at the start like everyone else probably talks thinks about it as well the same thing but so I think it was stupid and putting it together at the start. Yeah, I guess that a drama in the you know when you kind of look back on it now. It's, ah, yeah, yeah. It's it a television it program. Exactly. It's in a way that had to be a messed it. up situation. Not a you you situation. want you want to get emotion out of people, but it's positive or negative. You just want you want emotion. You don't want there to be silence. You don't want people to just be uh, whatever. I don't care what's happening. You want them to to watch it. Yeah. So that added to to that, you know. To that, but that had to be a horrible situation being out there in that house, was it? To be honest, I, I enjoyed it. Like, I, I enjoyed my time in the house. I enjoyed everything. I, obviously, I was pissed off when I kind of lost and didn't get in initially. But then once I was in, I was like, right, that's it, love. We're in, we're in the house. You're in the house, you're getting paid. The weather is nice, you know. You just train and you fight. And that's it, the food is given. That's it, no bills, no nothing. And, and so now you've been, uh, you've just been, you've been bouncing around with Connor for a while now, training, living the life, and, 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 and on your own as well. So I've seen you doing the... the how did that Russian sport, uh, special forces thing come up? That had to be. Yeah, that was actually good. That was a big honor for me. You know, for any Russian that would be you know to go into Kremlin and and train with the guys. This was they weren't special forces. It's called the FSO. They're like the guys responsible for uh, the security of the president. Uh, oh, so these kind of like personal things. Exactly. So yeah. you can see a lot of like. Uh, well, these guys were like very very smart guys and very well trained guys. You know this. This weren't just guys off the street. No, hundred percent. You know, 100%. This, you know I, I, I had as much to learn from them as they were from me. Oh yeah. So uh, yeah. So was, anybody you can see attacking the president, they're gonna get some tiger uppercuts. Is that yeah, you wanna exactly. see? Lad, I'm leaning out. <laughs> Boom! Taking That's chins it. off. Yeah, it was and good. It, it was good. It was a good experience. You know, they have they have their own club there at Kremlin, you know, where they train on a regular basis. You know, so they all stay in shape. Uh, so that's that's why I went, you know, just to you know exchange some ideas with them. That was cool. That's a di- like it's a different level of um, of security and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. All right, then. absolute. It's been a pleasure. I don't think there's much more of me to bleed and pull out you here. You know what I mean? So next day, well, you, you're looking to fight again. You're looking at your scheme the same attitude. That's always the same. I, I love to fight. You know, I, I don't really see myself completely retiring ever from fighting. So you know, whenever there is something on the horizon, I'll let everyone know and. I'm hoping that it's going to be soon. Fucking legend, yeah. Artem, absolute pleasure, man. Great to have yeah, you in. We kept it short and sweet. This is the Russian hammer. He was very... I, I, I was rushing to be on time this morning. I, I was rushing to be on time this morning. <laughs> at uh, 11, because I was like... And I was born Art, Russian. And so. He was born <laughs> Russian, so... We do a lot of Russian around there. <laughs> we do. Thanks for tuning in. Catch you next time.